Hey everyone, I really want to thank you all because I'm currently at 802 subscribers and I had no idea that you guys would be so interested in a lot of this later voice AI technology. I do think this is the best channel on YouTube for learning voice AI technology, actually how to apply it, how to build a local development version, how to actually launch the production, not just these platitudes and general theory about models and things of that nature. There are a lot of channels for that but actually building applications and selling them to customers. That's what this channel focuses on, along with getting on those cutting edge later tools that release like once every four hours. So if that's the channel you're looking for, this is the one that you've got, and thank you so much, I can do this without you. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So here, when we last left off, we set up our LiveKit account. We also were able to start the worker agent. Now this is great because now that the agent's running, we can essentially begin running the back end or rather the front end. So this front end here is going to require us to start a new terminal. And within that new terminal, I will CD into the front end application. And if you want any of this code, head over to my Discord. I have not only the code, but the Notion as well. And I also have a website that you can visit that breaks down all this to you so that you don't have to bump your head against documentation. I want you to learn as soon as possible so that you can begin building voice AI agents and launching them to customers as soon as possible. Now at this point, what we want to do is run the dev command. So npm run dev. Excellent. So something is running on port 3000 for me, therefore it defaulted to uh, 3001, and that's fine. The most important thing is, is our agent working? Now I'm gonna make sure that I do have sound here so that you guys can see. So for the sound, I'm going to route it to my MacBook because sometimes these things aren't that loud and I want you guys to be able to hear. So here, let me uh, just raise the volume a little bit. And without further ado, let's begin. Hello, how can I assist you today with coding? It seems like you might have a question or need some help with something. What can I do for you today? Who are you? I'm Dr. Fullstack here to help with any questions you might have about coding, software development, WebRTC, and cloud engineering on platforms like Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. How can I assist you today? Okay, so then between AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, what are some of the go-to ubiquitous solutions that people are using for deploying voice AI agents? For deploying voice AI agents, there are several popular and reliable solutions across AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. One, AWS, Amazon Lex. This service helps you build conversational interfaces using voice and text. It's integrated with AWS services and supports rich conversational experiences. Google Cloud, this platform allows you to create conversational interfaces for websites, mobile apps, and IoT devices. It supports voice interactions and is well integrated with Google Cloud's AI and machine learning capabilities. Three, Azure. Azure Bot Service. Combined with Azure Cognitive Services, it enables the creation of intelligent, conversational AI bots that can communicate with users naturally. These services provide robust tools for building and deploying voice-based AI applications. What is Google's UDP protocol? Google's UDP protocol isn't a specific protocol unique to Google, but there are several Google services and technologies that rely on or can work with UDP for communication, such as Quick, Quick UDP Internet Connections. Quick is a transport layer network protocol developed by Google built on top of UDP. It aims to provide faster connection establishment, better congestion control, and improved security compared to TCP. Quick is behind the scenes for services like Google Chrome, and Google Search to improve latency and reliability of connections. Two, Google Cloud. Various Google Cloud services and products rely on UDP for specific use cases, such as real-time communication or streaming, where minimizing latency is crucial. 
These technologies highlight Google's use wow. of Wow, so the mute button actually works, which is awesome. Especially in scenarios. So we'll look at the, some of that code for that mute button because I know that's something you guys would want to implement. Awesome. So is most of this technology open source? Some of the technologies mentioned are open source or have open source components, while others are proprietary. One, Quick, Quick UDP Internet Connections. Quick itself, as a protocol, is open source. Google has contributed to the development of Quick, and it is designed to be implemented in open source projects. The Quick protocol, including its specification, is available for use and implementation by the community. Two. Google Cloud. Many services and products within Google Cloud are proprietary. However, Google Cloud also supports open source technologies and offers tools and services that are compatible with open source ecosystems. Do you know what LiveKit is? Google. Yes, Laura stands for no. long range. No, LiveKit, LiveKit. What is LiveKit? Lyft is a transportation network company. Okay, that provides hold on. I'm going to spell it out for you. It is L I V E K I T. Life Kit is typically associated with systems and platforms that help in managing tasks, productivity, or workflows. No, no. L I V L I V E K I T. And it deals with low latency voice AI interactions. You're referring to Live Kit low latency voice communications which is a system designed to facilitate low latency voice ai interactions livekit focuses on minimizing the delay in voice communication to provide a more responsive and natural user experience particularly in applications like real-time voice assistance conferencing tools and interactive voice-based applications who is the ceo the is to reduce latency I'm here to help with any questions. Okay, so she doesn't know that. Need. Okay. If you have questions about low latency voice AI, when was LiveKit created? Like Do you know any information about LiveKit? LiveKit is a technology stack designed to optimize low latency voice interactions, particularly in the context of real time AI and communication applications. Such technology typically focuses on providing a robust infrastructure to. What infrastructure are they using underneath? Is it WebRTC or is it something else? While I don't have specific details about the underlying technology used by LiveKit, it's common for real-time communication systems to utilize WebRTC due to its low latency and robust support for voice, video, and data communication. WebRTC enables peer-to-peer -peer connections, which can significantly enhance the performance and responsiveness of voice interactions. If you're considering building or working with voice AI applications, certainly an important technology to consider for achieving awesome so as you can see the voice AI agent is working um, doesn't have that much context about LiveKit so that's where you may want to implement some retrieval augmented generation strategy or maybe some document retrieval um, because you do want some of this information to be real-time maybe it calls OpenAI uh, the API maybe it calls Claude 3.7 Sonnet uh, maybe it calls uh, perplexity I've seen a lot of people do that you can also use the Google Web Search API. So, so many things that you can do at this point. But I hope that this tutorial at least allows you to understand how to set this up locally. Now, the reason why I didn't set up the token server, even though that's included in the code here, is because we have the opportunity to utilize that with our mobile application. In this case, we have an application that's essentially web-based. Therefore, with Next.js, we're able to get that token from that API route that they configured for us. Now, one thing I did promise I was going to do was check out that pause or rather mute button because that is something that you're going to want to implement and I think that it's pretty neat. So here, let's look at the control bar. So within the control bar here, we have a component that we're declaring here. It's going to take in two props. One of those is on connect button clicked. All right. So here we're also going to take in the agent state. I'm going to remove this just so I can see this code a little better. All right. Let's see here. 
start conversation awesome here it's going to show that little motion that it does and at this point all right and then we just get here let's see here just close okay so this is the one that's literally hiding there okay so voice assistant control bar so here we have controls save user choices on device error and then we're pretty much using a spread operator on the rest of the props we've given it a interface of voice assistant control bar props and it's going to extend on the normal react components that way we don't have an error there now these are in beta here i love this so microphone is going to see if that's true or false and then leave i'm not really sure if that means leave the room or what that means um, so that's true or false great so as long as you put it in the live kit wrapper uh your looks it looks like you're fine there all right let's see here controls all right so within here the first variable that we create is called visible controls and it allows us to state whether we'd like to set leave to true microphone to true and then we essentially use a spread operator on all the rest of the controls here we have local permissions that's a variable that we're creating and this is the magic piece right here so we're importing use local participant permissions and then we're going to also destructure microphone track as well as local participant from use local participant okay now over here we're going to grab the track reference by creating a variable called my track ref and here it has a type associated with track reference or placeholder that comes directly from the live kit library it's not like you have to create that interface um, here we are using or sending this equal to a react use memo and this is so that we can memoize so that we don't have to keep running this function which becomes process intensive but um, we're using memoization not memorization but memo i okay so we're using that here so we can save these variables um, uh, unless particularly we have these two changing here and we want to reference them and save them between renders so here we've got participant which we're setting to local participant which we saw the destructure ring of that variable here and we see source so we're going to grab track dot source dot microphone now where's track come from that's getting imported so we head to the top we can import track from the live kit client so a lot of libraries that they've pretty much provided to us but it's important to know how they use them because the code in of itself still isn't super intuitive unless you've been working with this technology for years so over here we're now grabbing the publication and at this point we're saying that publication to microphone track now that one we did the structure here so this one and this one needs to be returned and we're pulling that from use local participant use local participant permissions as well as use local participant are from the live kit SDK so where are those here okay here so we've got hooks if we head over to hooks here we're right in the node modules and we see all of those here okay great so actually I just realized this is actually in the node modules in of itself. I thought that this was actually code that was privy to us, but it isn't. Um, but essentially, you can use this to really understand how that mute functionality works. So now we're going to see if we have local permissions. If we do have, uh, if we don't have local permissions, then essentially we're going to set visible controls that microphone false. But if we do have local permissions, then we're going to find out whether or not that token is allowing us to publish to the audio track. In this case, we can mute it. Um, here, HTML props, we're just taking a few styling preferences there. 
we're destructuring save audio input enabled and save audio input device ID. And then we've got use persistent user choices, which I'm assuming is also from the live kit SDK. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's coming from hooks. Great. Awesome. So we've got all of that uh, available to us. And let's see exactly what they're doing here. So if we go to, okay, of course. So this is for React. We're going to have to create an analogous React Native version, which is why it was important to go through all of that. But essentially, we see that that functionality is in here. And we can still access the other requirements. We just have to make sure that nothing is browser specific. All right. So here, we're pretty much saying we're going to utilize a callback. We're going to see if the microphone boolean was changed. And if so, we'll go ahead and enable that and publish that on the track. So it's just important that once that user decides that they want to mute, we're able to configure that mute option and publish it to the track. And essentially, that's what all of this code base is doing. So I can do a separate video where I go in depth. But I was just curious as to how that was functioning. Um, but I don't want to make this any longer than it has to be. So go ahead and subscribe. Join my Discord. This is the top AI channel on YouTube discussing the latest AI technology and how to actually create a development version, move it to production. We've got testing, how to get users, join the community, subscribe to the channel, and ask me anything. I am an open book. Dr. Fullstack, tuning out. Hope that you enjoyed.